Hello and welcome back to Monday Night Football NFL DFS Slate Breakdown for tonight's two-game slate. We have Tennessee versus Miami, and then we have the Lions, Detroit Lions versus Seattle Seahawks. I think we have a fun slate of games. I like having these two-game slates more than just a, a single Monday night uh, showdown one game primetime spot so let's dig into it we got some interesting things there's a ton of chalk on this slate and we got some difficult choices to make as far as where to pivot off the chalk we're going to talk about that but before we do come join us at line star 39.99 per month gets you access to all we do all the props all the dfs all the tools you get it all for one low price now let's get into it um should be a interesting one as always position by position going through some ownership and some pivot so geno smith and jared goff are the two highest owned quarterbacks and that's really no surprise whatsoever all their projections are or their projections are higher the game score is 46 and a half compared to 37 for tennessee versus miami now I like Geno and Jared Goff quite a bit. One thing I have to say about Jared Goff, though, is he has not had to do much this season. And I don't know if this is the game that he is going to. Seattle is a little bit hurt at uh, the defensive spot, especially along the front. They are missing, I believe, the, a defensive tackle, a defensive end, and a linebacker. And all of that is just going to make it easier for Detroit to run the ball, which that is what Detroit wants to do. They want to start through running the ball and give their running backs as much work as they possibly can. So with that being said, I think jo Jared Goff's ceiling is pretty low uh, again on this slate. So... I think he might be going a little over-owned, especially being the most expensive quarterback on this slate. So I like Jared Goff. I like this game, but I'm not a huge fan of him in this slate considering ownership. Geno Smith uh, is in a great spot. He is my favorite quarterback, but my second favorite is actually Tyler Huntley at 5,500 and only 15% owned. He's coming in as the lowest owned quarterback, and I think that should actually be Will Levis that is, just because of how terrible Levis has looked thus far. But this is the thing. Huntley, he has upside in rushing. I think uh, the offensive design is going to help Huntley big time. What they generally try and do is they try and get their receivers in space so they can get some yak after the catch and you got you know Tyreek Hill and then a guy that can separate and get away from a, a pass rush in Tyler Huntley so I'm interested in Huntley I think it's a big upgrade from Skylar Thompson as far as a backup and I'm willing to take some shots here at low ownership on to FanDuel the uh, it's a little bit different. Tyler Huntley is the second highest owned quarterback, but Jared Goff is right there with uh, Will Levis <laughs> far behind and the fourth owned. I find it very hard to get behind Levis uh, outside of this one big blow up game where he had four touchdowns on only 19 completions. He hasn't really done much. He had another game where he was able to throw for 300, although it was versus Miami, so he's getting that Miami again. Uh, he really hasn't done much. I, I find it extremely hard to want to go there. At least there is a little bit of rushing upside. If he's able to run one in, you know, there's a path. But I think it is. it does come down to is Levis going to run a touchdown in or not that's kind of the make it break it for uh for me with uh going to him and then team defense tool at uh the good old quarterback spot Huntley is in the best matchup but none of the quarterbacks are in really great matchups here now getting over to running back our high owned running back is David Montgomery I think he clearly should be Jamar Gibbs is right there also with 41 percent 
You know, one of the things that I think is interesting is if you just play both those guys together. The Lions are going to want to run the ball. We've seen multiple times where these two running backs uh, get it done and, you know, have fantasy-worthy scores together. So I think that is an interesting thing. Look, 17, 18, or 17, 18, 16 for Gibbs, 16, 17, 24 for Montgomery. There is absolutely a path where those two being together on your team is good. And I think it is going to be a little bit of a unique combination because most people are going to say, I only want one running back from a team. This is one situation where I don't mind going both Gibbs and Montgomery. They are both high owned, but I think uh, there's going to be very few lineups that actually have both of them in, uh, in the same, same lineup. Next, we got Tony Pollard, 34%. I think he clearly should be the third highest guy. There is big time upside here. Uh, Miami is 27th versus running back so far this season. Pollard has been good uh, so far this year, except for versus Green Bay, where they just absolutely pounced on uh, the Titans. But I, uh, I think this game is going to stay relatively close, but Pollard would be my uh, one that I think is going to get it off. I do have to say that I think Taji Spears is probably going a little overlooked here. He is a pretty good pass catching back. If they're big behind big, uh, they may lean on him a little bit more. Now Pollard's a good pass catching back too, but uh, Spears has shown some big play upside. And I think at super low ownership as an RB2, there is some interest. I mean, 7, 5, 10 at 4,800. If he just adds a touchdown to one of these games, then all of a sudden, you know, you're talking about somebody in the optimal lineup and it's possible. Is it probable? No, but it's absolutely possible. I think he is uh, very much in line for a good spot. Kenneth Walker, uh, 6,300, 2X is what we have him at value-wise. He is healthy again he's off the injury report but i hate this matchup out of the say five running backs that are firmly in play here he's my least favorite devon h hand uh is actually probably my third favorite running back behind montgomery and gibbs um actually he's maybe second behind montgomery and then Pollard's definitely probably the fourth with Kenneth being the fifth. I think it's just going to be hard. This Detroit Lions front is very, very good. Uh, Walker, while he'll get a couple targets, that's not where he lives. And I think it's a little interesting to just go down to Charbonnet, who Charbonnet is going to get his in the passing game. Uh, if Seattle does fall behind a little bit and they're asked to pass a little more. I think there's a path to Charbonnet doing okay, but his price tag is up because he's been the starter the last two weeks. So it's going to be a super low owned uh, play there when it all comes, you know, down at the end of the day. Devon Achan, he is going to be the workhorse once again. Raheem Mostert's doubtful, uh, highly doubt. Mostert is playing. It's going to be a Chan. It's going to be Jeff Wils, uh, Wilson. And then also a little bit of Jalen Wright, who was used a little bit last game. I think it's clearly, though, pretty much the a Chan show. And then if you want to get, you know, real crazy, you can use Wilson or uh, Wright. But it's just a low confidence play there. But you do have to consider the RB2s tonight and, you know, Gibbs Montgomery, absolutely there. Raheem Mostert's likely out, so I would expect the projections to come up for uh, Wright or Wilson a little bit. And they're in play. Taji Spears is in play. Charbonnet is overpriced, but on a slate like this, he gets in the end zone, and there's a good chance he ends up being, uh, 
you know, needed if he also catches four or five uh, passes. Now, I would say it's a very low confidence play of that happening. I think it is more likely that, I mean, Pollard at cheaper, you know, probably crushes him. So very hard to go to Charbonnet today just due to his price. But interesting pivot if you uh, want to go there. Now, on to FanDuel, running back-wise, Kenneth Walker at 7K, and our highest owned to me is uh, a little bit wild. I would be pivoting off Walker for sure at that ownership. Love Montgomery, love Gibbs, love H-Han. I do expect H-Han to be more owned than what we have of him. Uh, but definitely, definitely interested in him. And if he comes at 30% owned, I think that's a steal. And Tony Pollard at 17% owned is wild to me. I would way rather him at 6,600 than uh, Kenneth Walker at 7K and at way less owned. So very, very much interested in him. The only thing with him is that his six score is the only running back that is slightly lower than a uh, hundred, but uh, definitely like him. And then after that, the RB two mix, I pretty much, I'm going to try and have one to two guys in every lineup that are under uh, 20% owned. One of them is going to have to be under 15 ish percent owned. Uh, but Pollard is definitely in, that running and then also the Spears, uh, Charbonnet, Wright or Wilson are in the running to be uh, in some of those lineups. Also, I think we're going to have to diff get a little different and the places that are easiest to get different are tight end and running back generally because they're used a little more around the goal line and can get that, get in that end zone. So going over to the team uh, matchup tool, Tony Pollard, best matchup on the slate, but yet going under owned. HN, very interesting. Montgomery has a minus matchup here, but understand that Seattle is dealing with some injuries on the defense. So it's a little bit better than it really uh, looks on paper here. And that uh, Kenneth Walker should actually be in as the RB1, but has by far the uh, worst spot here. With uh, Jeff Wilson having an interesting RB2 matchup along with uh, Gibbs. Now, let's uh, get it over to wide receiver. Our high-owned wide receiver, Amon Ross, St. Brown, Jackson Smith, Najigba. I, uh, I think JSN is in a great spot at 5,500. Absolutely interested in him and Tyler Lockett, really. Uh, DK Metcalf, Seattle's probably going to have to air it out a little bit. Detroit, very tough against the ground. You can beat them through the air a little bit, and those guys are all very interesting. Monroe St. Brown, I, guy is just an absolute beast, and very few are as consistent as him, so you have to consider him. Now, the one thing is ownership play here. He's going very high-owned, and I think – there's ways to get different at 8,300. Would it be that surprising or 8,200 if uh, Tyree kill at 7,900 outscored him? I know it's Tyler Huntley, but you have Hills, you know, big playability that is just unworldly. And if he was to break a big one, there's a good chance he's outscoring a Mara at way lower ownership. So I think there are some pivots to that we can make here jameson Jameis wills uh williams 5600 he had a bad game last game but came off nine targets and 11 targets and then went down to three do i think he's only going to get three targets again probably not i think he probably gets more and he's very much in the realm of possibility i do not think we have to go to a monroe st brown and with pricing uh and where ownership is, I think that's one of the pivots that I'm going to make is probably not a ton of a Monra. I do like him, but we got to make some choices here. And this is one where I think we can 
Waddle is cheap, gets you different. Tyreek is expensive, gets you different. Calvin Ridley has big playability. These Tennessee receivers are getting some targets. They are a little interesting. And uh, D-Hop was finally playing in a lot of a lot of snaps last game. Got seven targets. He becomes interesting. Tyler Boyd is a super cheap pivot. Getting 14 targets so far in the year. 4,200. I don't mind going that way as well. And then obviously there are your uh, real wild pivots like Khalif Raymond, who is RB or WR3. Uh, he has some big playability, has some speed. He can get wild at 3,400. He is a little bit interesting. I don't love it, but he is absolutely in play. On to uh, FanDuel here. Amon Ra, once again, the high owned. Tyreek is second at 8K, 48% owned. He is, you know, a lot cheaper in relation to Amon Ra and DK Metcalf. So I'm not that surprised seeing his ownership so high here. Uh, DK Metcalf, he is the Seattle receivers all have super high alert scores. So I think they have to be on your radar today. The Tennessee receivers get you different. And then the Lions, you know, second and tertiary receiving options are other options or spots where you can get different. I think there's a lot of a lot of ways on uh, this slate where we can and should try to figure out how to not do exactly what the field is. It is going to be hard to get away from the chalk. Our running back chalk, very clear. You know, there's three, four guys that everybody wants. That running back ownership is going to be high. At wide receiver, you know, there's a couple guys that everybody wants. But we're going to have to make some choices. And going with, you know, wide receiver twos over wide receiver ones is definitely a spot we can do it. Uh, especially on this slate. And our matchup tool for wide receiver one, DK Metcalf, clearly has the best matchup with Tyreek in the second spot. And Amon Ra, getting all the ownership, the third worst spot. Going to wide receiver two, Tyler Lockett. It's also kind of JSN is in that number two spot. Uh, great matchup with uh, DeAndre Hopkins. Also in a good one. And then if you look, Waddle or Jameis Wils, uh, Williams in a tough spot. And then JSN in the best uh, wide receiver spot or wide receiver three spot with Seattle. I find him extremely interesting at a little bit lower ownership and just giant target volume uh, in that game too. He is going to be game script dependent, it looks like. There's a big possibility that in, uh, in this game, he is one of the guys that you ended up needing to have. Now let's go to tight end. Our highest owned tight end on the day is Noah Fant. Then we have Chig uh, and Wiley for Tennessee coming in at two and three. John, John o. Smith then all the way down, down to Sam Laporta. And this is why I said I'm probably fading a Monra a little bit. I love this spot for Sam Laporta, 5,700. He's done absolutely nothing, but he has giant leverage on the field. You're taking down Amara uh, lineups. You're taking down lineups that, you know, paid down at tight end, which everybody's going to do because you need to pay up at running back, you know, wide receiver, all these other spots. I think Amara just gets you so much different, and then you fill it in you know, with more wide receiver two, three action so you can fit him in. But uh, it's just huge leverage on the field. We saw what he did all last year. Seattle's been poured to the tight end. I mean, Hunter Henry just went eight for 109. Can Sam Laporta do that? Absolutely. He's a big time end zone threat. Had 10 touchdowns last year. They need to get him involved. He's off the injury report now. I, uh, 
I love the leverage you get on DraftKings from Salem Horta, and I would just be hammering him on uh, DraftKings. Outside of that, no offense, clearly my second best option. And then there's that trio in Tennessee, which is just so hard to pick from th the three guys as far as who will do well. Uh, I know they like Josh Weil. He has been, you know, was good in camp and getting some reviews, but really it's anybody guess. I think it's just the fact they use three of them. I'm kind of out on all of them as it's just hard to pick off. And then Jonu Smith, I think, should be in the running. We saw him have a seven-target game. Can he do that again? Yes. Is it probable? No. But I would say three to five targets is likely. And he is an explosive, you know, athletic tight end who can make more out of uh, – out of it than most so I don't care I don't mind him but at least he is you know a little bit lower owned and cheap but uh, clearly Laporta is my top option Fanta second Jonu Smith is third now on to a uh, tight end on FanDuel Chig is the highest own with Sam Laporta right there neck and neck uh, the fact that Laporta is only you know like 1500 difference over here then on DraftKings makes the difference people aren't going to want to pay up to Laporta though for what he's done four for 45 two for 13 two for 36 it's been bad uh but I mean we saw him have several games like that last year it's not like it's out you know that wild he wasn't always amazing he is going to be matchup uh, dependent, and the emergence of Jameis Williams is only going to make the matchup depends, dependency worse. This is a great matchup for him. I'm attacking. It is one of my clear spots that I want to get, and uh, you know, a big leverage sp leverage spot for me. I'm going to have a lot of Sam Laporta here. And matchup wise, Sam Laporta is 27th, whereas Chig or the tight end spot is 28th. Again, the issue with the Tennessee tight end spot, they use three guys. It's going to be very hard to pick one of them. At least, you know, they're going to be a little lower owned, but uh, I don't love trying to pick on three tight ends. I would rather go to Laporta. Uh, or Fant. So that's uh, just my take on the tight end position. Let's move it over to defense. Our highest owned defense is the Dolphins versus Tennessee. No surprise. Tennessee, Will Levis has loved to throw interceptions and they're throwing a lot. So those interceptions are coming. Uh, Detroit versus Seattle. This Detroit lineup or uh, defense has been pretty solid. I don't mind 2,900 to go against uh, that Seattle offense. And then I don't love going to the Seattle offense or the Seattle defense versus the Lions. Lions have been protecting the ball and not throwing a ton of interceptions, not fumbling much, and they're missing some guys from their front. I think it's going to be a hard game for the Seattle defense. And then lastly, you got Tennessee versus the Dolphins. I mean, it's the lower, lower scoring game, and it's Tyler Huntley. While I do think Huntley is a step up from Skylar Thompson, he is a journeyman backup. He's been to a ton of teams. He's in a new system, another new system. I, the playbook could be very, very vanilla for him, and if so, maybe the Titans defense is able to uh, pounce on that a little bit. And highest owned on uh, FanDuel, we got Dolphins, then Seahawks, then Lions. I would go uh, Dolphins, Lions, Tennessee, then Seahawks as far as my favorite uh, defensive matchups. And that will do it for us today, guys. Hope you guys had a one, good one. Good luck. Let's make some money. I'll see you guys later. Peace.